So we've already worked through one example of a life table, and this is the second example. This example comes from our uh, Flox Drummondi that was published in Leverick and Levin in 1979. This table is also available as Table 8.4 in our textbook, which is David Crony's Ecology, Evolution, Application, and Integration. So in this table, what's different is that we don't have the dx. We actually start with our nx column, and that's fine. Um, hopefully you just go back and watch the first video and you understand how to go from dx to nx. All right, so how do we complete this table? Well, we're going to start with our survivorship. So our survivorship, remember, is the number of lives at the start divided by how many individuals were alive at the start of our population. And we're always going to divide by that number, so I will use the dollar sign notation. So we have 100%. And then I can just fill in, and you can see that 100% were alive, but then at the start of our next age category, age 1, we only have about 16%. So we had a huge mortality rate. We had a huge mortality rate. QX needs a DX column. So how are we going to fix this? So what I'm going to do is just going to resize, and I'm going to insert a column, and I'm just going to make my DX. So how do we get the DX? The DX is simply the number of individuals that died during that time interval. So we know how many individuals were alive at the start. We know how many individuals were alive at the start of our next age class. And that and I'll just subtract those two numbers because that tells me how many individuals actually died. So once I have that dx column, then I could calculate my mortality, which is that number, divided by how many individuals were alive. And you'll see that we had about 84% died in that first age, and then mortality rates really drop off. Mortality rates really dropped off. Just like our first table, we can calculate life expectancy. But first, we're going to have to calculate two more things. So L, big L sub x is the average number of individuals alive during that age, which is the average of those two numbers. And I will drag and fill to get that out, to get the entire column. And then Tx is the sum of this column but we're going to fix that very last one because it's it's the number of individuals alive at in our age and beyond so we start off with 1445 years or ages and then it drops off so now we have our big t sub x column and now our life expectancy that the tx divided by our nx so you can see our life expectancy for this population is 1.45 all right so i'm going to fill this up and i am going to highlight this one more time just so you can see that if i ask the question what is the life expectancy of our population that is the value that we take. We have to start at age zero. What's notable is that if we're born into this population, we only expect to live one, almost 1 1.5 ages. That's it. But if we survive that critical early period, then we expect to live another five ages after that. This, is a, this can be typical for certain, certain species. You have a high risk of death early on, but if you get through that high risk, more, high risk age, then you expect to live quite a long time. So right here we have our survivorship, we can make a survivorship curve, and we have our life expectancy. But on this table, this is in a plant that we have information on reproduction. You can consider that this table could also refer to female individuals in our population. And if we have our birth schedule, which is right here, we have our birth schedule then we can calculate two other things we can calculate a net reproductive rate or, or not and we can calculate a generation time
So the first thing that we'll do is calculate our net reproductive rate. And the net reproductive rate accounts for the birth schedule and survivorship. So what I'm going to do is multiply our survivorship times our BX of that age. And remember in lecture I said this is kind of like realized reproduction. So at age zero, our realized reproduction is zero. We're not reproducing. And then at our very next age, our realized reproduction is 0 0.05. Now why is it 0 0.05 even though our birth is 0 0.34? Well, it's because not all individuals survive to that age. We have to account for that death. How much death did we have? Well, we had almost, we had 84% of our individuals die, so we have to account for that. So I'm going to fill this out. This is our realized reproduction column, and that means then that our net reproductive rate is the sum of this column. And our net reproductive rate is 2.43. So question, is this population growing, declining, or staying the same, not unchanging. So hopefully you recognize that since this value is greater than one, our population is growing. So we have our net reproductive rate. The last thing that we can calculate is generation time. Now our generation time tells us approximately how many years or how many ages it takes before the next cohort is, is born. Uh, in discrete non-overlapping generations, it's pretty easy to calculate this, but in a life table where we can have continuous generations and overlapping generations, then what we kind of say is approximately how long on average does it take an individual to start reproducing, and that represents our generation time. So what we're going to do is take our LXBX and we're going to multiply it by our X. What is our x? Well, that is our age. And remember, our age always has to start with zero because these individuals, they haven't lived a complete age category yet, so they've lived zero complete ages. So I'm going to take my LXBX column, and I'm going to multiply it by my age column, and I'm going to do that all for this entire column. And then what we're going to do is calculate our generation time. So the generation time will be the sum of this column divided by our net reproductive rate. So I'll take the sum of this column divided by our net reproductive rate, and that gives us G, or generation time. So on average, these phlox plants will start reproducing in their age of five. In this case, we have days. So perhaps with our day, a, days category, this list like a class, an age class. So they're gonna start reproducing in about their fifth age class on average. Now reproduction could occur earlier, but by and large, our generation time takes about five age classes uh, to get to our next cohort. So this is our second example. This example would, would uh, be applicable to females if we make a life table only of females and if we have birth schedules related to it. So just like the males, we can do our survivorships, we can do our life expectancies, and since we have a birth schedules, we can also calculate our net reproductive rates and our generation time. So our next video now will show you how to plot two different survivorship curves onto one graph.